is the chairman of the Gypsy Council, Joseph Jones, and Conservative MP for Kettering, Philip Hollibone. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Um, Philip Hollibone, let's start with you. I mean, Eric Pickles isn't really telling councils anything that they don't already know. So this is his political grandstanding to look tough, isn't it? No, there is a new power in the announcement that's been made, and it's to do with the imposition of temporary stop notices on illegal encampments. So there is a tightening of the law, and that should be to the advantage of local authorities. But, but councils knew about this already, or is this the first time they've heard about it today? It changed in May, and this is the first time that it's been publicised. But they knew about it in May? Yes. Right, so why is he telling us about it now? I mean, it looks like it's a leap to the right, doesn't it, if you link it in with everything else that your, com your, your party are doing with uh, posters about illegal immigration. It all looks like a desperate attempt to get UKIP voters. Well, I suspect the reason it's being announced now is that traditionally, in August, with the bank holiday, there have been uh, illegal traveller incursions over the bank holiday period. And I think the Secretary of State for Local Government is just warning councils they have this extra power now to prevent this. Via TV channels. Well, that all helps. Um, Joseph Jones, let's bring you into this debate now. I mean, Eric Pickle says the number of illegal traveller sites has gone up fourfold under the previous government. I mean, he's right to push local councils to crack down on this, isn't he? I think that local councils already know what powers they have. And I haven't seen anything new in the, in the statement. Well, Philip Holloway says there is something new. To yeah, he said, but I, I haven't seen it myself and I've read it a few times. Um, but local authorities... They know what to do. They've been managing unauthorised encampments for many, many years, for hundreds of years, basically. You know, Gypsy and Travellers have been in this country for 500 years. But this statement just seems to add an extra level of confusion to the situation because one minute it's talking about unauthorised encampments, which is people staying in laybys or bits of grass here and there. And then the next moment it's talking about people who are applying for planning permission. And they're two completely different... Subjects. Okay, Philip Pollowin, what's your experience of illegal traveller sites where your constituency is in Kettering? Well, my constituents have, in some cases, been reduced to tears by the threat of gypsies and travellers turning up in their neighbourhood. And it's a threat to village dwellers and to people living in towns. So in the town of Kettering itself, we've recently had an incursion of 50 caravans, which the council acted swiftly to deal with but there's a village called Braybrook in my constituency which has had more and more travellers applying for planning permission around the village and it got so great that the entire school, local primary school, was taken up with traveller children and the local village children had to go elsewhere. Is that fair, Joseph Jones? What would you say to the constituents of Philip Hollibones? It, 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 you know, it makes me wonder, why on earth would someone be you know, um, brought to tears by the thought of a planning application? Why were they? Well, because gypsies and travellers bring with them intimidation by travelling in such large numbers, a sad history of crime and antisocial behaviour, and littering the environment and failing to clear up after they go. Is that fair? I mean, look, we've had a huge number of response on our Twitter and Facebook page. This is from Mitchell Hodson on Facebook saying, have you seen the mess that they can sometimes create in the field in only one week? Why should we pay our council tax so most of it just goes on cleaning up after them? What would you say to that, James? Well, sometimes... Where there's an, uh, an unauthorised encampment, people leave mess behind them. But not every right? time. Yeah, sometimes they do. Every community's got people in it that don't always play by the rules. But that doesn't mean the whole community is doing it. And it doesn't mean the whole community is pre, um, pre disposed, uh, disposed to, to committing crimes, the way our colleague seems to be implying here. And aren't you tiring everyone with the same brush here, Philip Holliber? Another tweet, actually, from Wendy Stevenson says, travellers have used certain areas for hundreds of years. Don't take every one of them away from them. Some traditions should be maintained. I mean, you're threatening to do that, aren't you? No, there are legitimately maintained local authority gypsy and traveller sites. There are, there's one in Kettering, for example. Which but aren't a... you trying to put through a private member's bill believing that special provision in planning law shouldn't be made for gypsy and travellers? Well, that's reasons? right. I mean, the, the Why wider... are you doing that? Well, the wider question here, why should there be any special provision at all for gypsies and travellers? Why shouldn't we all have the same planning rules, whatever our background? What I, think, I think we should all have the same. And I think when gypsies and travellers put in for planning permission, they should have the same rate of refusal as everybody else. But as it stands, as it stood for many, many years, gypsy and traveller planning applications 
you know, about 95% of them are refused, whereas normal applications, only 60%. Will they ever be welcome where you live? I mean, have you actually made an effort to go and visit traveller sites in your area? Yes, gypsies and travellers used to be welcomed in rural communities. What about in your... Britain. How many times have you visited your local traveller sites? Well, I've been to traveller sites in the village of Braybrook, and I've been closely involved in the consultation on setting up 37 more pitches in the borough of Kettering, which is going on at the moment. And Joseph Jones, will Philip Hollowbone be welcome where you live? He'd be welcome anywhere, I'm sure, with gypsies and travellers. But, I mean, this, to me, is more about grandstanding. It's like part of the climate we've got at the moment. You know, we've had the go-home campaign, we've got the, the bongo thing going on, and now it's, let's put out a, a statement. It doesn't have much in it, but we can highlight a negative side of gypsies and travellers. We have to leave it there. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me tonight.